Hey, it's your Wisconsin Wine Guy, back with another wine review. And we are, you can see by these wines, we're going to be doing white wines today, right? Just getting my pour turned around properly. So now, if you're new to the show, these are wines that you can find on the shelves wherever you shop for wine, grocery store, liquor store, wine shop. I give these wines a taste to give you my opinion, let you know what I think about them. We're utilizing a simple thumb rating system. Very simple. You know, no frills, no thrills. Thumbs up. I recommend this wine. Three quarters. You know what? I'm digging this. We're vibing. I'm sharing with my friends. Halfway? Ooh, not so much for me, but I'll tell you why. Doesn't mean you won't like it, but I'll tell you why I don't like it. Thumbs down? Always an easy one. Get the wine out of here. It's not working. Not even worth the money. Definitely wasn't worth my money, right? Okay. So now, today's show, as you can see here, we're doing Chateau Saint Michel. Chateau Saint Michel have been around for over 50 years. They've been around for a long time, right? It's funny to think back. If you're drinking wine or as long as I have been, to think back when uh, California dominated so much and no one was talking about Washington, Washington wines, no one was talking about wines from uh, Oregon, you know, but all of a sudden, boom, there they were. But they've been around for a while. So a lot of good wines, a lot of good wineries there. You know, be sure to check out and explore. Expand your palate. Expand your reach and explore different wines. Not just in this country, but outside this country. That's enough of the commercial, right? So now we're here and we're going to be doing Chateau Saint Michel. I, I reviewed quite a few Chateau Saint Michel wines and I thought I actually reviewed them all, but I'm starting to find a few that I haven't reviewed. I look back in my uh, the years of reviewing wines and there's a few I haven't done and I'm sure there's a few more. So let's get to it. Sauvignon Blanc 2020 Columbia Valley and the Riesling also from Columbia Valley. Uh, in fact, this is called the the Harvest Select Sweet Riesling 2018. Now, here's what's so cool about their Rieslings. You know, all their Rieslings, they do this. On the back of the bottle, they give you a sweetness scale. So you know exactly where you're at when it comes to. So the sweetness scale in here says it goes from dry to sweet. But this is here is like at medium sweet. All right. So it's at, at a point where it says it's medium sweet, but it's kind of close to sweet, but it's medium sweet. So I, we're gonna find out how sweet that is. When I hear something that says, uh, I have a wine that says uh, sweet, I'm thinking like, mm, it's gonna be sweet. You know, but again, I'm not opposed to sweet wines. I just like balancing my sweet wines, and I hope you do too. I know, how do you like your lemonade? That's the question to ask yourself. How do you like your lemonade? You like your lemonade, like, over the top sweet, you know, a cup of lemonade gets two cups of sugar, or do you like a lemonade to have a balance to it, where you can taste the citrus, taste the fruitiness of the lemon, but just a hint of sweetness there to make it pleasing. You decide, right? Let's give these a pour. 2020 Sauvignon Blanc from Columbia Valley. I mean, a lot of delicious wines coming out of Washington, whether it be reds and whites, you know, but Chateau Saint Marcel, as far as for ooh, did you hear that? As far as production, at least the pack. You know, they do quite a bit of wine. You know, Chateau Saint Marcel. Now these are their uh I like to say their store level wines. There's other wines you can find, but there's a, quite a few across the board. Uh on Chateau Saint Marcel and their wines. But these are these are I, I don't want to like lessen the wine and saying, you know, that it's it's lower tier because it's not that, you know. Every every wine regardless of what the label is, regardless of what they said, the wine, every wine has its place. And this is one of the wines that has its place. Something I just noticed here on the Sauvignon Blanc, they, they give you uh, analysis, right? Here we go. We have per five ounce of glass, your calories are gonna be 116, your carbs are gonna be 2.2 grams, and less than one gram of sugar per five ounce glass, and gluten free. You know what, let me tell you something, this is me. I think it's great, you know. Let's be transparent on the wines. Let's just show things. In fact, you can go that far. If you're had putting additives into your wine, let's put that on there too, right? Right. But all that aside, if I'm drinking alcohol, I'm not concerning myself with calories and fat grams and sugar grams. Well, sugar grams maybe because you could be diabetic. But I'm not concerning myself with calories, right? <laughs> Otherwise, why am I drinking alcohol? There's my two cents on this whole ordeal, but to each his own. So we have the Sauvignon Blanc and we have the Columbia Valley Racing 2020 versus 2018. Now it's going to be interesting that 
normally, if you've been following me, I always do Sauvignon Blanc last. In this case, I'm not sure which way I want to go. So I'm going to I'm going to do it off the cuff in this case. All right, I don't know which I'm going to do first. We're going to, as far as tasting goes, because Sauvignon Blanc can like totally kill any wine that comes after it. You know, like wow, because it, it can be so powerful, especially if it's from New Zealand. So there's the swirl color. You know, we have nice. In fact, both of these, we have darker coloring in the Riesling versus the Sauvignon Blanc. You know, so they both have yellow hues, but it's darker. As you can see, here's the, here's the Riesling, here's the Sauvignon Blanc. You know, it's a little bit darker in the Riesling, all right? Putting it against the paper, white background, you know, it has more of a sheen. On the white background, the uh, Sauvignon Blanc is darker. Isn't that funny? Wow. Change the background, change the perspective. <laughs> so now on the nose. Woo, wow. You know, instantly citrus. It's more specifically, instantly grapefruit. I'm going white grapefruit on this one with a background of melons. Wow, total, totally on that one for the, re the Riesling. Now, it says sweet, so I'm thinking in my mind, I'm thinking this, that, and the other, but you gotta have an open mind. You can't let what you read uh, have an effect or influence of what you're gonna smell, right? Right, so here we go. Quick smell, now, I tell you right away for me, petroleum. Now, if you watch my videos when it came to Riesling, you'd have heard this speak before, so I'm trying to make it short. I got schooled once. By a group of Germans, you know, and we're kind of friends now. But I got schooled once by a group of Germans, you know, on wines. When I went to a wine taste after drinking so much of uh, domestic Rieslings and having that petroleum smell, some is more predominant, some is more slight, you know, but it was there. But it's like I searched for that in Rieslings, like the average wine drinker at once upon a time, you're like, you search for that. If it wasn't sweet, you search for that. So that was a, a component, it was natural, right? And it's been a part of Rieslings for quite a few years, but. When I was talking about that, yeah, these Germans pulled me off to the side and, and schooled me on Riesling. That is not desired. Especially, I mean, it, it can be there, but it is a fault. It can be there, but it's a fault. But if it's like, that's the first thing coming, the fruit is there, it's like, that's not it. And for me, that's totally it. Okay? It doesn't mean it wise when it taste bad. But for me, I totally pick up on that. It's funny, some things, when you pick up on certain faults on wines, you never forget. You don't look for it, but you never forget. It's it's in your memory bank. Let's go back to the Sauvignon Blanc. Clear my nose. Now the Sauvignon Blanc. See, I really have to do it. Just like this. Smell my skin. <laughs> now. All right, still citrus. Nice. Grapefruit's there. In the minute, I was like, oh, my God, this has changed. But that's why you, you smell something neutral. And for me, it's my skin, and you come back to it, and there you go. We're back in business now. So let's give it a taste. For me, tasting, again, acidity, especially in white wines. No acidity, no play. And definitely, definitely in the wines that have sweetness to it. I don't want to taste like syrup. I want balance to my sweet wine. I enjoy sweet wines, but I want balance to it. I want balance of acidity. Again, how do you like your lemonade? That determines how you're going to like a sweet wine, right? Okay, right, there you go. Ooh, who should I go first? I'm going to go with this one first because of that petroleum nose I got on that one. I don't want to you know, bring faults or, or, or change the, 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 the taste of this wine. The rinse first. Okay, decent acidity, you know, nice balance to it, almost almost like subtle candy on the back end though. You ever taste that, I don't know if you had that, like something that had a lot of sugar in it, you taste it, I kind of pick up a little bit of that, but, you know, okay. Now for the reasoning. Wow, that sucks. You know, it's just like stuck in my head. Wow, here we go. Ritz. Mm. 
Wow. It's in the taste too. What you smell, what you taste. The acidity is nice, okay? But for me, it's just like right up front. This is right there. For me, that kills it. All right? You already know I'm leaning forward towards this one, right? But I'm going to give you more details in a minute. Let's go back to the Sauvignon Blanc. And I want to tell you something. When I first opened the Sauvignon Blanc, and this is why it's important to let your wines breathe. When I first opened the Sauvignon Blanc, it was so... It had such a strong detection of sulfur. Okay? Now it's very subtle. You know, it's there, but it's very subtle. Okay? It could just be this bottle. I don't know. It could be all the bottles. I don't know. I'm only drinking this bottle. But in the original opening of this bottle, it was so strong of sulfur, but it mellowed out since I poured some out and it had a chance to aerate a little bit. And that's what happens when the wine, I mean, there's sulfur in the bottles for preservation, you know, natural or intended. It's there to preserve the wine. Otherwise, you know, you'll get spoiled wine for the most part, right? So it was there. It aired out a little bit. So that's, I'm going to let you know. Transparency, right? Since they want to be transparent, let me be transparent. So transparency. So be aware of that. But it did smooth over. I know it's there, but it's very well subdued than what it was when I first had this wine. All right, there's my taste. It does not play well after the Riesling. So I'm going to do this one again. That Riesling, that petroleum taste is, is so dominant or predominant, you know, it's just controlling everything. So I got to do this one again. Okay. All right. There's the reason. There's the Sauvignon Blanc. It's locked and loaded. I'm gonna come back and taste this. But let's talk about the Sauvignon Blanc. 2020 Sauvignon Blanc. Shout out to save myself. It's not gonna be New Zealand. It's not gonna have that that striking aggressive acidity to it. But it has a nice level of acidity to it. Um, it has nice fruit characteristic. Nice citrus. Nice subtle melon notes, you know, very pleasant. Again, in that initial taste, I had, it's like I can feel the sugars, but that seemed to have dissipated away, which is why I'm constantly tasting it. That was just an initial taste. And don't remember what I said in the beginning that I had to open this bottle, pour some out, let it aerate, you know, a little bit, to get rid of that, that the sulfur taste. Uh, so for nose and taste, I should say, it was both there, but and it's like suddenly there. So Wisconsin wine, wine guy is going to give the Sauvignon Blanc 2020 Chateau St. Michel. We give it a pass. I'm going to go to halfway. I don't want to completely cancel it out because it could be this bottle, but I'm definitely going to give it a pass uh, for me because, of uh, again, it's beginning of opening and what I detect that's still there. Even though I love the citrus, the great fruit taste, I love the melon taste, you know, but I'm going to give it a pass because of that, because I know it's there. And again, let me say it again, it could just be this bottle. So you give it a taste and let me know. I really want you to give it a taste and let me know if you pick up on that, you know, that that, that, that sulfur nose and sulfur taste when you open it, when you freshly open the bottle and then when you taste it. But I don't argue again with the fruit. I think it's spot on. The city is nice, but that's it. Halfway. Now, let's turn to the Riesling Chateau Saint Michel. I enjoy Riesling. You know, whether it be from Germany or any parts of the world, I enjoy Riesling if it's done right. Unfortunately, when Rieslings were being produced in America, that petroleum thing, uh, America and other places, that petroleum became the thing, right? That there's this, there's this, the, the distinguishing separation from other Rieslings. But when I got schooled, yeah, forget that. So that is totally taking over this wine and totally taking over what could be the best of this wine. Because when it comes to the sweetness, I believe that the sweetness is very well balanced. Some may say, oh my God, that's really sweet. But I find the sweetness to be very well balanced in this one here. Even though it says sweet, I think the label is misleading. When you see sweet, I think like a sweet harvest. I think late harvest is going to be more dessert-like. But again, if you're a dry wine drinker, you're going to find this sweeter than what you're normally accustomed to drinking. But it's not really that sweet, in my opinion, for my palate. Let's give it a taste. 
I mean, there is a level of sweetness, but for me, and it may be sweeter when I'm thinking, but for me, I can't get past that because of the petroleum, when the taste in the nose. So for me, Chateau Saint Michel 2018 Riesling, thumbs down. Okay, I mean, if we're gonna do this, we gotta do this right. Thumbs down here, halfway for here. These didn't pass for me. And that's unfortunate because I always enjoyed the Chateau Saint Michel wines that I've sampled in the past. But there you have it. I can't go any further with these. Again, 2020 Sauvignon Blanc. I encourage you to try it though because it could just simply be this bottle. That is what I'm saying. Halfway. This one here, I, I'm going to go on a limb and say it's going to be the same for all bottles. Thumbs down. Remember, let your palate be the guy with selecting your wine, just as I do. And I'll see you next time. Gosh, I'm so disappointed in these wines. Ciao.